Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War news video. So exactly a week ago, Rome Remastered received a brand new patch. Beta 2.02 was released roughly 7 weeks after the first patch and it's at a whole new level compared to the first one. Having read through all the notes and played it a bit in the last week, I have to say it's actually quite promising. There's a wide range of issues addressed from fixing AI behavior to additions of new modding capabilities that do make the game more and more like what I expected at launch a few months ago. So in this video, I'll be running through the major sections of this patch, how it will affect gameplay, the modding potential, and why in the next few weeks and months you should probably dust it off the shelf and give it another go. So first and foremost, a lot of the issues and complaints people had with the Rome Remastered at launch was the UI. It seemed overly complicated compared to the original, clunky to get from one menu to the other, and didn't seem as easy and user friendly. It just felt unnecessary. So this is the first section of the patch I want to talk about because they've done a bit of work here. You can now rename settlements by double clicking the name, a minor one but still nice to have. You can now change the tax rate within each settlement, not sure why they removed that to begin with so it's nice to have it back. Switching between panels now doesn't open and close others like between construction and recruitment which is a huge win for me, partly why I hated this system because shit was constantly opening and closing in various places. Another big one they seemingly removed from the original was being able to open the construction panel right away by double clicking the settlement. So they've added it back in, which is a really good thing. Settlement and income detail panels now look a bit clearer as well, which is a welcome change. One thing here I do need to point out though is that when you have a unit selected, clicking on that unit now deselects it. Such a massive quality of life improvement here. I don't understand how this wasn't a thing before, so good that finally it's been added. This was all in the campaign UI, but a few things have changed in the battle UI as well. Namely, you can now see which units have their weapon and armor upgrades, and the halt and withdraw buttons are now always available, which why they weren't just baffles me. Overall, there's been a decent amount of work in the UI part of the game that definitely does make a difference, and I think when you try it out, you'll agree. Some information is clearer, some new information makes your life easier, and there are little fixes here and there that make it less clunky. That being said, I still think there should be an option to revert back to the original UI if people want. It's a no-brainer, and if that's one of the main issues people have with this remastered version, then surely, just like the new features that they've added, you should be able to use the old UI as well. Part of the issue with Rome Remastered when it launched was the modding capabilities were still a bit limited. One couldn't, for example, add more factions to the game, which is still the case, despite being the number one request. Or you couldn't play around with certain stats or resources that play a role in the background. For a game that many hyped up to be highly moddable, it came with its limitations, which was a shame. What this patch does though, first and foremost, is resolve a lot of these issues. Modders now have the potential to play around with many more features in the base game that have been moved over from the expansions, which is amazing. In the base game, we can have mods now that add horde states, religion as a measure of happiness and influence, or naming of legions which will add to the immersion in the game. We've also got increased unit and region caps as well as features that should have been unlocked for modders from the start like building bonuses or graphics settings. We already have a great graphics mod with Mundus Magnus for the campaign map but this will add a lot more potential to graphics modding capabilities. And just going back for a second to what I said just now earlier, we have an increased region cap which means we can have a lot more settlements in this game guys. Huge, huge potential to expand the scope and scale of this game. Finally, I just want to point out that resources are now completely moddable, meaning existing resources can get new icons, scripted events, and we can get completely new resources unique to certain regions for example as well. There are also additional scripting options, meaning there's more flexibility for modders to add and maintain new scripts in their mods and have it not interfere with other mods as well, so compatibility might get easier. And logging means they can keep track of what issues their mods are experiencing and fix them a lot quicker rather than the trial and error they've been doing until now. There are also plenty of fixes implemented in this patch for the mod manager and plenty of new additions for what can be done with a campaign map. You can now play around with the map 
meshes as well as add new rows and columns to the map, which is a fantastic thing as modders can adjust and even expand the campaign map if they wanted. Overall, you get the idea. Modding capabilities have really been expanded with this patch, but beyond that, the flexibility, the ease of access, and the trial and error capabilities of modding Rome Remastered have also been changed for the better, which is a great thing. Off the back of this, expect to see more mods that make the most of these changes, and mods like Imperium Serectum or Total Conquest overhaul the game even more. Last but not least, the patch actually takes a crack at the campaign and battle AI behavior. Though it does seem on the campaign side of things that it mostly changes how the AI responds to diplomatic propositions as opposed to how the AI recruits, for example, or how it wages war. That being said, there are some specific changes here and there worth mentioning. Naval threats, which apparently the AI will now respond to with more urgency compared to before. It also responds better to military access and ceasefire proposals. Compensation has also been reworked to be more flexible rather than the here's what I want, bugger off if you're not going to give it to me. Reputation has been slightly tweaked to change with various different elements. And offering bribes to rebel settlements now has a negative reputation effect, which is an interesting addition. But the real issues, as we all know, are to do with the battle AI, for which there has been some decent work done. Now I've gone ahead and tried the AI to get a feel for whether any of this has actually made a real difference in the game, and I can say it's actually done a really good job. Yes, pathfinding is a bit better, and units don't behave as weirdly as they did before in narrow streets, which is a really good improvement, but there are still a few issues here and there to do with how AI behaves on walls, when you give your units orders. If you group select units together and order them to attack, for example, they'll make some pretty bad life choices when it comes to who to attack and the path to get there, which in some cases can be game breaking. The improved pathfinding aspect of units getting to the center of the settlement also seems a little bit mixed for me. Some battles I found that my units made their way pretty efficiently, while others still had a hard time. It does get a bit frustrating, guys. The one fix here that I really did appreciate though and works wonders is the amount of time it takes units to get up a siege tower and onto the walls. It takes a lot less time now which means my units aren't constantly losing loads of soldiers to missile units, I'm not waiting as long for the ramp to come down, so big kudos to Feral for that one. Everything else seems good guys, AI cavalry positioning does seem a lot smarter, they stick together more and don't just rush into infantry, a unit in guard mode stays together as well which is really good to see, and the AI actually does avoid defensive wall towers so very nicely done. All in all, battles are definitely more enjoyable and the AI is definitely more responsive and smart about the decisions it's making. There are lots of other issues as well that have been resolved, crashes and bug fixes that players have reported on, some multiplayer issues as well, though still no chat function which kinda sucks, and lots of gameplay and visual fixes as well that are all very welcome. Overall, Beta 2.02 is the patch that people were waiting for. We can have more settlements and mods now, we can fight a battle AI that is smarter than the original, and the UI does look a bit better. I'm really happy with this patch guys personally, and I think you'll agree once you try it yourself as well. Hope you enjoyed this video guys, and if you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comments section below. What do you think about the beta patch so far? Also, don't forget to drop by my Discord if you want to chat with myself and other subscribers of the channel directly, link is in the description below. Subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay and news, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.